Mastoiditis is a serious bacterial infection that affects the mastoid bone, which is the prominent bumpy bone you can feel behind your ear. This mastoid bone isn't actually solid. It's filled with air cells that connect to the middle ear. Normally, these air spaces help regulate ear pressure and drainage, but when bacteria from a middle ear infection spread into these cells, they become inflamed and filled with pus. Think of it as the infection traveling from your ear into the nearby bone structure. This condition is serious because the mastoid bone sits close to the brain, and if left untreated, the infection can eat away at the bone and could even spread to the brain. Mastoiditis was once a common and life-threatening condition, but with the widespread use of antibiotics to treat ear infections, its prevalence has significantly decreased. Today, it is considered rare, occurring in less than 1 in 10,000 cases of ear infections. It is most frequently seen in young children due to their higher susceptibility to middle ear infections, but it can still occur in adults, especially if an ear infection is left untreated or does not respond to antibiotics. Types of mastoiditis There are two main types of mastoiditis that doctors recognize. Acute mastoiditis develops quickly, usually as a complication of an ear infection that hasn't been treated properly or hasn't responded to treatment. It's more common in children and can become serious quite rapidly if not addressed. Chronic mastoiditis, on the other hand, develops more slowly over time. It usually occurs in people who have long-standing or recurring ear infections. The symptoms might be less severe than acute mastoiditis, but the condition can still cause significant problems if left untreated. Causes of mastoiditis The primary cause of mastoiditis is usually an untreated or severe middle ear infection. Let us explain how this typically happens. First, bacteria like Streptococcus pneumonia or Staphylococcus aureus invade the middle ear, often after a cold or flu. This causes fluid to build up, causing pain and pressure. If the infection isn't cleared with antibiotics, bacteria can migrate from the middle ear into the mastoid bone's air cells. The inflammation blocks normal drainage, trapping pus inside the bone. Over time, the infection can destroy the bony walls of the mastoid air cells, forming pockets of pus or abscesses. In severe cases, the infection breaches the bone, threatening the brain, facial nerves, or bloodstream. Several factors can increase the risk of developing mastoiditis. Kids under 2 have shorter, more horizontal eustachian tubes, which drain the ear, making ear infections more likely. Recurrent ear infections also increase the chance of bacteria becoming antibiotic-resistant or spreading. People with weakened immune systems are also more susceptible. Sometimes, the condition can develop despite proper treatment of an ear infection, especially if the bacteria are resistant to antibiotics. Symptoms of mastoiditis Mastoiditis symptoms often start like a bad ear infection but escalate quickly. The first symptom you might notice is intense ear pain. This isn't your average ear ache. It's a deep, throbbing pain that radiates behind the ear and might get worse at night. Imagine someone drilling into your skull just below your ear. Soon after, the skin over the mastoid bone becomes red, warm, and puffy. You might notice your ear sticking out more because the swelling pushes it forward. Pressing on the mastoid bone hurts, a lot. Even lying on that side of your head might be unbearable. Fever and chills are also common as your body fights the infection. Thick, yellow, or bloody fluid might leak from the ear. This is pus from the infected mastoid cells. Hearing loss can occur too, as fluid and inflammation muffle sounds, making it feel like you're underwater. In children, you might notice they're irritable, not eating well, or having trouble sleeping. They might also tug at their ears or complain of ear pain. Babies might be especially fussy and have trouble feeding. If the infection spreads beyond the mastoid bone, more serious symptoms can develop. These might include severe headaches, stiff neck, confusion, or facial paralysis. These are emergency symptoms that require immediate medical attention. Diagnosis of mastoiditis Diagnosing mastoiditis involves several steps and tests. Your doctor will start with a detailed medical history, asking about recent ear infections, symptoms, and how long they've been present. They'll perform a physical examination, looking at both the outer ear and the area behind it. 
An otoscope examination is crucial. This is when the doctor looks inside your ear canal with a special instrument. They're checking for signs of middle ear infection and any perforation of the eardrum. Imaging tests are often necessary. A CT scan is particularly useful because it can show the internal structure of the mastoid bone and reveal any destruction of the air cells or spread of infection. Sometimes an MRI might be needed if there's concern about the infection spreading to surrounding tissues. Laboratory tests are important too. Your doctor might take samples of any drainage from your ear to identify the specific bacteria causing the infection. Blood tests can help determine how severe the infection is and guide treatment decisions. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Treatment for mastoiditis. The treatment of mastoiditis needs to be aggressive and usually requires a combination of approaches. Here are the main treatments used. Number one, intravenous antibiotics. This is usually the first line of treatment. Strong antibiotics are given through an IV to fight the infection quickly and effectively. The type of antibiotic chosen depends on the likely bacteria involved and may be adjusted once culture results are available. This treatment typically requires hospitalization, at least initially, and the IV antibiotics are usually continued for several days. After improvement is seen, the patient might be switched to oral antibiotics to complete the course of treatment. Number 2. Surgical Intervention in many cases, surgery is necessary to remove infected bone and drain the infection. This procedure is called a mastoidectomy. During the surgery, the doctor removes infected air cells from the mastoid bone and creates proper drainage. The extent of the surgery depends on how severe the infection is and how much of the mastoid bone is affected. Recovery from surgery typically takes several weeks and follow-up care is essential to ensure proper healing. Number 3. Myringotomy. This procedure involves making a small incision in the eardrum to drain fluid from the middle ear. A tiny tube, called tympanostomy tube, might be placed in the eardrum to allow continued drainage and ventilation of the middle ear. This helps prevent future infections and allows antibiotics to reach the infected area more effectively. Number 4. Pain Management. Pain control is an important part of treatment. This might include over-the-counter pain relievers like acetaminophen or ibuprofen or stronger prescription pain medications if needed. The goal is to keep the patient comfortable while other treatments work to combat the infection. After treatment, regular follow-up appointments are essential to ensure the infection has cleared completely and hasn't caused any lasting damage. Your doctor will want to monitor your hearing and check that the ear is healing properly. Most people recover fully if treated early but some deal with lingering issues. Hearing loss might require hearing aids or surgery like a tympanoplasty if the eardrum or middle ear bones were damaged. Prevention of mastoiditis. Preventing mastoiditis largely involves proper treatment of ear infections. This means completing the full course of prescribed antibiotics for any ear infection, even if symptoms improve. Regular checkups with a doctor are important if you have frequent ear infections. Good ear care practices can also help prevent initial ear infections. This includes keeping ears dry after swimming or bathing, avoiding putting objects in the ears, and protecting ears from excessive noise exposure. If you or someone you know develops severe ear pain, especially with fever and swelling behind the ear, seek medical attention immediately. Early treatment is crucial to prevent serious complications. Now, we want to hear from you. Have you or a loved one ever experienced mastoiditis? What were the symptoms and how was the recovery process? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.